In this video, we'll look at the SketchUp interface. When you open SketchUp, this is what you'll see. There are menus and submenus here of tools and functions. This is the Getting Started toolbar, and this is the Trimble Connect toolbar. Clicking on this graphic lets you save your model to the cloud. With your SketchUp subscription, you have a little corner of Trimble that you'll log into using the same login as, as you use to log into SketchUp, and you can save your models there as well as locally. In these trays, you have more tools and functions. This is a scale figure, which helps you get a feel for how large or small your model is. And these are the axes to which you will model parallel. I like to work with more toolbars open than this. So click on View, Toolbars, and you can see other toolbars that I can open. I like to work with the standard toolbar open, the views toolbar, and the large tool set. When I double click on each one, it will dock. And I can still drag it around to where I want. If I drag an individual tool while this box is open, it duplicates. That's useful because I can make a new toolbar that holds my favorite tools in it. And then I can drag the duplicate into it. If I close that, I won't see it, and if I don't want this anymore, I can click Delete. I can also reset these toolbars if I've duplicated or deleted or moved icons by just clicking Reset to reset a specific toolbar, or Reset All to reset all of them. You can see the duplicate disappeared. Now let's draw something. There are tool tips that open when I hover the mouse over each tool, and I'm going to click on the rectangle and then I'll click once, twice, and you can see in the dimensions box in the lower right the, the size of the rectangle. I can also type a particular size, 10 foot, comma, 10 foot, and the rectangle will adjust to that. Then I can just hit enter to finish. I'm going to undo that and draw it again. Now, once I click or once I type the size and hit enter, as long as I don't click anything else or move the cursor or click on another tool, I can type another set of dimensions and it will adjust. But once I click the mouse to finish or click on another tool, I cannot adjust it like that. Now note that I am typing the foot symbol after each dimension. The default is inches. If I were to simply type 10 comma 10, 
I would make a 10 inch by 10 inch square. This is push pull and this gives the sketch volume. Now I want to show you something about how SketchUp works via groups and fusion. If I make another rectangle next to the first one and then I want to move it, I can't. It's sticky. It sticks to the geometry behind it. So how to fix that is this. Triple click to select all connected geometry. Right click and choose make group. And now an invisible shell has been constructed around the geometry. So anything I make will not stick to it. And I can move it. To edit a group, I have to double click to open the editing box and then I can edit it. Notice that tooltip that has come up saying midpoint and notice that the line is green meaning that I'm drawing parallel to the green axis. If I'm not parallel to any axis, the line will be black. So I've just drawn a line and now that line will travel with the rest of the group. And this is important because a lot of times Beginners will draw outside the group, thinking they're editing the box. I'm hitting Escape to finish that drawing operation. And then they find out that it was outside the box when they move the box and their edits don't go with it. But there's a quick fix to that. Select this, go to Edit, Cut, double click to open the group, go to Edit, Paste in Place, and then click on the workspace to close the group. Now when you move the box, that line will move with it. And as you can see, we have Undo and Redo up here. Let's take a look at some of these other icons. On the Views toolbar, this shows me a top view, but notice that it's in perspective. If I go to Camera, I can choose Parallel Projection, and now I get an orthographic view. Front view right side view, left view, back view, bottom view, and then an isometric view. If I go back to this camera menu, I can see this in two-point perspective. And that, put, and that movement put me back into the default of perspective, which is a three-point perspective. This will take me to the warehouse where I can download millions of models. This takes me to the extension warehouse where I can download extensions or apps. This takes me directly to Layout, where I can make documentation drawings. 
and this opens the extension manager which shows which extensions I have installed. Here are the zoom icons and if I click zoom extents then the model fills up the whole screen. If I hold the scroll wheel down and the shift key at the same time, I can pan, which is what this tool does. Now let's talk about selecting. This is a component, and if I select it, the whole thing selects, and hit delete, it goes away, but I can bring it back by clicking on Components, Component Sampler, and you can see other scale figures in here that I can bring in. And there is this one. Now to demonstrate a selection window, I'm going to explode this group and this brings it back to loose geometry. If I drag a window from upper left to lower right, everything inside that window gets selected. If I drag a window from lower right to upper left, just what that window touches gets selected. You can see these black lines have not been selected. And up here is the selection tool. And if I clicked here, you can see I even have a lasso option. So I can select that way. And that is a quick overview of the interface.